Welcome to r slash reddit revenge. This is a story of someone getting back at someone with revenge, after being wronged. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel, and for so many likes. The first story, housemates spent bill money I gave them, I did my best to tear their lives apart. The second story, I cost the screwers a boatload of dough and removed an a-hole from his high paying job in the process. The third story, guy scams me out of $200. The fourth story, woman got revenge after her selfishness. Today's first story is, take the money I give for bills and squander it, hope you like the court system. The background, I lived with a group of people who I thought were my friends. They were two couples and we all lived in the same house for almost two years until I recently moved out. There was David and Tina and Brittany and AJ. I was the only single person there. There was debate on how we should pay the bills, but we all decided to give the money to the person whose name was on the bill. David paid the mortgage, Tina paid the water and electric and gas, and I paid the internet. It came to the point to where I was paying close to 80% of the mortgage by myself, the entire water bill, about 75% of the gas and electric, and I was paying the internet bill by myself. I was giving the money still to the person in charge of the bill, but came to find out about 10 days before I moved out that the mortgage was defaulted on and the house was in foreclosure. Also, the water, gas, and electric bills were in constant threat of being shut off, and the only up-to-date bill was the internet. While they all saw me struggle to pay these off, they were mindlessly spending money during the day, which is when I sleep due to working third shift, so I never saw the mindless things they spent money on, nor did I ever see the mail, since they grabbed it before I woke up. Brittany never paid anything, as she was having her check garnished due to unpaid student loans, but she always had expensive makeup. AJ never held a job for more than two weeks. David and Tina were always calling into work, knowing that I wouldn't allow them to go without a home due to their history. One day I woke up while they were all out and about, doing something or other, so I went to go check the mail as I was expecting a package, when I saw the bills in the mail, so I decided to investigate. I opened up the gas and electric bill, as they are by the same company, to see a total of amount of almost $400 and in risk of being shut off. I was shocked and peeved. I knew right then and there what was going on, and I vowed to screw them over as hard as I could. The revenge. I had just interviewed for a new job that paid almost double what I was making and knew that I interviewed well with them. So I told myself that if I got the job, I would give them a 30-day notice and move out, and as it was close to the end of the month and I had already paid them, I would be moving out before the 1st of February. I got the call with the job offer the next day, which I happily accepted. I did the paperwork for the background check, and it all came back clean. The same day I accepted the offer, I typed out a 30-day notice and recorded myself with my phone in my breast pocket, handing it to them, explaining that I was moving out. I started my job and my hunt for an apartment close to my new job, which I found within a week of starting. I took almost the entirety of my checks, set them aside for rent, deposit, and basic things that I would need. I was asked several times to help with the next month's bills, to which I said no, as I was saving for my own place and that they had plenty of time to come up with the money between the four of them because I was doing it all by myself pretty much on a meager pay rate of $11 an hour before my new job. There were a lot of scowls, passive aggressive behavior, and flat out attempts to take or use my things or food without permission. The day came when I finally went and got my U-Haul and I had a few friends help me move. Free beer and free lunch are the best payment ever as they shared it all with me. I was determined to get it all in one go, so I got the biggest one they had and we got everything packed up. I took everything that was mine down to my pizza stone, which they loved, my expensive kitchen knives which they would use and never clean, even my toilet paper that I had bought three days prior because I needed it. A few rolls went missing very quick. After moving everything I sat down on my couch, looked around my cat in my lap and breathed a sigh of relief. I happened to be good friends with my previous neighbors. We smoked each other out frequently and ask them to keep an eye out for anything out of the ordinary. Four days go by, and I come to find out that the gas, electric, and water have all been turned off, and they were asking to fill up some buckets to manually flush the toilets, bathe in, etc. Now, both couples have dogs, which my cat hated, as they were both hyperactive as hell, but I love them, so I decided that those dogs were in a dangerous situation, as they had no water, no heat in the middle of winter, and probably no food, as I had bought the last bag about two weeks prior. I hate to see an animal hungry. So I called the local humane society and left an anonymous tip about the dogs and how I was worried about them. The next day my neighbor Todd texted me telling me that the dogs were removed from the home, that my previous housemates were being charged with neglect and because of the lack of utilities, that these were not civil but criminal charges. This was enough for me to smile, but I wanted more. I knew that David was divorced and had a child. I also knew that he wasn't paying child support. I then contacted the local courts and made them aware of the flagrant non-support and that maybe they could help the agency looking for him. I provided the address that we lived at 
and that the homeowner was the one that was being looked for. From there, it came to light that he was almost $25,000 behind, which is a felony in the state where I live. He's now living with someone on their couch. As Tina left him, the house has been foreclosed on, and he has nothing to his name, while facing multiple criminal charges. Moral of the story? Don't take advantage of a friend who knows all your dirty secrets. The second story is, Thieving dogs screwed me out of $4,000. I got it back and cost the dogs another $700,000. A few months ago, a company, Low Dogs LLC, was required to sell some pretty rare stuff. Low Dogs was very cozy with another company, Morality Limited, that wanted the stuff, but the industry we're in is highly regulated, and so Low Dogs couldn't just sell straight to Morality. So to be seen to comply with the regulations, Low Dogs offered to sell the stuff to some other people, me being one. They said that if we wanted the stuff, it was ours. And if we didn't, well then they would sell it to Morality Limited. In that way, they would comply with the regulations prohibiting direct sale to their buddies at Morality Limited. So I get Low Dog's offer, and you know what? It's actually very well priced. I say thanks, here's my check, and await my stuff. Tick tock, tick tock, no stuff. Call Low Dog's up and say, yo, where's that stuff I bought? And they say, oh, we sold it all to Morality for the same price we offered it to you. Here's your check back. And so I say, nah uh, and I sue them for a few grand. That being the profit I didn't make by reselling the stuff they didn't deliver. Now, Low Dogs could have sorted me out pretty easily. Settle my claim, move on. For reasons known only to them, they didn't. They chose the Double Dare option, engaged high-flying attorneys, and started fighting hard, over a few grand. Old fisting donkeys don't bend over when someone tries to screw him, so all that did was provide further encouragement. I spent several weeks and several thousand dollars putting together a detailed dossier on everything that had happened, then sent it to Low Dogs and said, we can do this the easy way, sort this out, or the hard way. I'll provide this to the regulators. They said you'll never bother, go away. Ah, uh, okay kids, whatever you think. So off it went to the regulator. The regulator took a look at my dossier and came down on them hard. On my estimate, Low Dog spent maybe $100,000 on attorneys in fighting the regulator, only to lose the argument. The regulator forced Morality Limited to give the stuff back to Low Dogs, who then had to give it to me and everyone else who'd placed orders but been denied, at the original low price. The profit that Morality Limited missed out on was something like $600,000. And as it happened, Morality Limited had contrived the original scheme with Low Dogs, and they were planning to share the profits. Too bad, so sad. Amusing enough, but there's a kicker. Turns out the stock controller at Low Dogs, who was an a-hole to me when I complained that I hadn't received my order, hadn't actually passed everything on to Morality. He'd kept some for himself and sold it for a neat profit of about $20,000. When the regulator was investigating what had happened, that fact came out, and Low Dogs weren't happy. They were so unhappy, in fact, that the stock controller was promptly sacked from his 200k PA job. Unlucky. The next story is, I found the guy who scammed me out of $200. A few years ago, I was looking for a BotCon exclusive shattered glass Rodimus. Prices on eBay were too d high, so I turned to the Junkion Exchange on TFW2005.com. I bought and sold items there several times and have gotten great deals. I put out a post of what I was looking to buy and waited. The next day I got a message from a user I'll refer to as SH Lord, or SL for short. SL said he had a shattered glass Rodimus and said he would sell for $200. That was at least half of what they went for on eBay at the time, so I accepted and sent the money via PayPal as a gift. Some of the balance was paid via my PayPal balance and the majority off my credit card. $50 from PayPal and $150 from credit card. This detail is important later. In short, SL lied. He never had the figure I wanted and scammed me out of $200. I went to the TFW 2005 forums, calling this guy out, and asked for help from the mods over there. After doing so, I called PayPal. Sadly, since the payment was sent as a gift, there was nothing they could do to refund me. However, the rep told me since about $150 was paid for my credit card, I can file a claim with them. He told me what department to call, who to talk to, and what sort of claim to file. Awesome. He also put a note on SH Lord's account to be investigated. After calling my credit card company, someone on TFW2005 emailed me saying they knew this seller IRL and gave me his contact details. Normally I don't support doxing someone but he's a thief. F him. I called SL and left a voicemail and text. He later called me and tried to play dumb. Then he said his TFW2005 account and his PayPal were hacked. Really? What a coincidence. I told him he should refund me my money or I would call his local police and have them sort this out. He caved after that and gave me a sob story, how he needed the money to buy his daughter a Christmas gift. I didn't buy the story and threatened legal action. He had to have his girlfriend send my money back through her PayPal account, since his ended up getting locked due to all this nonsense. So I got my PayPal balance of $50 from him, and my bank credited me $150. So I got my $200 back. Here's the kicker. I never told him I filed a claim against him with my credit card company. 
Keep in mind he only sent me back $50 for PayPal. My credit card company refunded me the $150, $200 in total. So that meant they had his info too, and they would come after him to recoup their costs. A week later my bank called me and told me this seller was claiming I breached PayPal's terms of service and blah blah blah. I called the guy again and told him if he lied again, I would call the cops. An hour later my bank said everything was resolved and to have a nice day. The last story is, stringing someone along, time for revenge. A woman where I used to work was and still is one of the most self-centered people I've ever met. Everything was about her, and she filled every workday with stories about her clothes, her figure, who was flirting with her, etc, etc. It became hurtful for me, because she clearly tried to one-up about dating, and I'd gone through a tough breakup. Then it began hurting others. Harry, the brother-in-law of another co-worker, Kay, had met her and tried to date her, and Miss Narcissist was simply stringing him along for the ego trip, of bragging about his phone calls, etc. She wouldn't tell him she wasn't interested, because then she wouldn't get the attention from him, or from telling us her stories. Well, Kay had a party and we were all invited, but Miss N couldn't attend, even though the would-be suitor was there. So we cooked up a plan, and our entire small work team was in on it, including a male co-worker. The next Monday, we began the following very loud conversation over our cubicle walls. Male co-worker. Hey, word to the wise. Harry sure seemed interested in you at the party. Are you two gonna get together? Me. I don't know. I just met him. Male co-worker. I think he wants to go out with you. K. He asked about you after you left, so don't be surprised if you hear from him. Me. We'll see. He seems nice and he's fun to be around. I was deliberately sounding iffy. Phone rings in Mrs. Narcissus' cubicle, and it's Harry, who asked the following pre-scripted question. Harry. Hey, what can you tell me about word? Do you think she'd go out with me? Miss Narcissist very stiffly. I really don't know. You'll have to ask her. The conversation ends quickly. By this time, we're all in pain, trying to avoid laughing out loud. Phone rings again in my cubicle. Me, loudly. Hey, it's good to hear from you. Then a bunch of quiet mumbling, where nobody could hear the words, punctuated with some laughter on my part. She never asked about the conversation, and never again brought up his name. And the best part, he got revenge for the way she was treating him, and we all got revenge for the endless, boring, self-centered crap she subjected us to. Here's a special punchline. I didn't even attend the party, but we knew of each other and we were all fed up with Miss Narcissus' behavior. So we cooked up the plan, and he was more than happy to go along with it. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.